Alright guys, we're going to check out the patches for 11.10, 11.10, 11.1, however you want to say it. So this is the last card changes made by the Gwent team and before the community balance. So let's see what we're changing for the last one. And let's go take a look. So new features, balance council. Might talk about that separately. I don't think I want to do it right here. We've got changes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, neutral. Let's see. Ale of the Ancestors now has alchemy tag. I like Ale of the Ancestors in alchemy. I like Ale of the Ancestors, and giving it the alchemy tag helps. Usually you'd play this before your Crow Clan preachers. So like you play this, then you play your preacher, and you boost the preacher so it's at 7, so it's hard to kill. But I guess this way, if you draw into it, or you end up deciding to play it later on to carry over, it'll trigger something when you play it. So that's interesting. I think the big thing here is the Ermian can tutor it. That'll help a lot. If you, I think that's the big deal, right? So Ermian should be able to tutor this now that has the alchemy tag. That is the biggest deal here. I don't think it changes how you play it if it's in your hand. Because remember, like I said, you'd play it first. But if you have access to get it out of your deck easier with Ermian, that helps a lot. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Especially because it's kind of expensive. Whereas you'd want to play Oniromancy, usually if you're playing Druids, right? Because you want to get your scenario. And this are two cards you definitely want to get at certain times. Maybe you don't need the Ermian to tutor this, but if you're not playing Oniromancy, maybe you want to play like a Devotion deck. Maybe that could work, although this is can't play Devotion because the Hail is a neutral card. But yeah, this is interesting. I like the change. I think there's some uses there. Pretty cool. Siri Nova, new part of the ability. Siri Nova and Golden Necker are excluded from this condition. Does this say on Golden Necker too? Just scroll down. Yeah. All right, so Siri Nova and Golden Necker are excluded from their own condition. I actually really like this. One of the problems with Siri Nova and Golden Necker, more so Golden Necker than Siri Nova, well, oh, way more so for Golden Necker at least, is the cards are so strong for the provision cost. And you can't nerf the provisions of the card because then you can't play the deck. Which is, I think, where there are a lot of memes about the balance, community balance making it 10 provisions, so you couldn't use it anymore. But I like this, because you can make the Golden Necker and the Siri Nova like 11, 10 or 11 provisions if the Golden Necker decks are too strong. So they have less good cards in the deck as a way to balance them out. Whereas right now, like the one that we're printed, there's just no way to make Golden Necker or Siri Nova cheaper. Like when the Golden Necker Aaron deck was super popular, people were talking about how to nerf Golden Necker. And you just can't nerf its provisions because it doesn't work. So now that you can like nerf its provisions if people want to, I think that's perfectly fair. I think it's a good thing to do. That kind of applies to both of these, although I think Siri Nova is much more fair than Necker. Anyway, moving on. Colossal Ifrit corrected the tooltip to reflect the ability. It targets three adjacent enemy units, not on the opposite row. Yeah, so this was a just like a tooltip thing. It said on the opposite row, but it wasn't. And I wasn't sure if that was a bug or what, but... Like, it was kind of confusing when it first came out, but it just targets three units. It doesn't have to be the opposite row. This is pretty useful. It's just pretty useful to have that in there, but nothing too big there. Regis Bloodlust. Oh, yeah, none of us were suspecting this, right? The on-battlefield effect is changed to banish the top three cards from your deck instead of your entire deck. Uh, okay. Now, that is interesting for a couple of decks that really want to be consistent. Where you can, because what you would do, like you had two options for this, right? You'd either build the deck, the banish the opponent's deck, which was hilarious. We made a video on it. <laughs> you just, you give the opponent the Regis Bloodlust after they've passed, and then they lose their deck, and you mill them completely. That was hilarious, but no one liked it, and I don't think it was fun to play against. It was like funny to do a couple times. That was about it. Yeah, it was funny to do a few times. But that was about it. So, anyway, so now if it's on the board, they banish three cards, the same as if it's in your graveyard. Graveyard. So what you would, what you could do, and you could do before, is you'd go like, um, what's his face? Oh, was the wild hunt guy? How do I forget this randomly? Emlareth. Like discard the Regis with Emlareth, and it's like a twenty-one, and then you'd eat it with Azrael for like a twenty-one, like right away. Actually, is Emlareth three base power? I don't remember. But yeah, you just do that. Now you can just play it, and because you could play it before and just have it out there, you can always lock it on the field before you would consume it with something but now you can just play it take that three banish and then just have a 20 that's interesting i like this much better even though the uh, banish opponent's deck was funny every now and then i think this is better for the game to have it be like this so else we have sangrael having the alchemy tag okay that makes sense like i think the ales are all alchemies now so i think all the drinks are alchemies 
probably. Oh yeah, speaking of that tainted ale right below it. Yeah, so these is this is an alchemy. Does that help it in an alchemy deck? Like, would you play this in druids? I guess you have Gremist, right? Gremist would refresh upon the play of this, so you could purify it. That's interesting. Everyone's still going to play it on Siri, um, false Siri, but that's interesting. At least it gives it more of an option there. It's pretty cool. Tainted Ale. I wonder if you'd play this because you really lack control in Druids a lot of the time. So maybe you would consider this. I don't, I don't think I would, but maybe there's a deck where you'd use it. This takes some consideration. You can't target, you can no longer target allies. I'm going to be honest, I kind of like the cards that can target your allies for damage. It gives you a lot of, in, like, play against things like uh, cultists or just, like, spying infused stuff, but I understand it. And we go on Crow's Eye, boost from 3 to 4. Ooh, from 3 to 4. Now, this makes it interesting, because Crow's Eye is the purify boost by 3 alchemy. Now this is interesting because previously if you had if you wanted to purify you would play Peller. Like Peller was the purify card. And Peller's at four power. So if you ever wanted to purify an ally unit, Peller was just objectively better than Crow's Eye. We take a look real quick at the library here. If it'll load up, we'll see it. I couldn't get this to load earlier. I'm gonna have it open on another tab, but yeah, normally you just play Peller. Peller's got for power, but now that this boosts by four, it's the same value. Downside is obviously um, you don't want to be boosting opponent's units, but it's much better for your own cards if you think your opponent's going to be locking you, which is definitely something in Druids, and since it's an alchemy, I think in Druid at least, this would be played over a Peller now, although they do have Gremist. You could fit this in with Gremist. The extra point really makes a difference. Then lastly, we've got the Thaw. Thaw is interesting too. Boost from four to five. Thaw, Thaw, people tried, I think. People tried a couple times. I saw it a few times. But Nova really got it to work. Yeah, as you see, like, I can't open the, uh, the thing he's not working right now. This is unfortunate. The library, so we can't open up the card. But that's unfortunate. But anyway, yeah, Thaw from four to five. I think this makes a little bit less difference than the Crow's Eye one. Just because this makes it compete with Peller, specifically in Druids. I'm not sure about Thaw. We'll see. We'll see about Thaw. We'll see how that one turns out. Moving on to Monsters, we have Varina. She did need a buff. What do we got here? Boost, Restriction, Only Effects, Enemies. This is really good. It really didn't make sense that she stopped your own, own cards from boosting. I mean, it's kind of like Dire Bear, right? Dire Bear stops your cards your cards on the road from boosting too, but there's a workaround, right? You can just have Bloodthirst 7. Or not Bloodthirst, um, Berserk 7, I think it is. Like, it just takes one damage and only affects the opponent. Farina didn't have anything like that. And specifically with how popular Nilfgaard was with the status effects and Aristocrats, they put out a lot of bleeding just from the Ardfiend, for example. And then you just can't boost your cards anymore. So, I like this is getting changed. It also made mirror matches with vampires, which I only played a couple of. But, it made those kind of ridiculous. Because you just can't play Verena in the mirror match. Because you can't boost, they just put bleed on your flutters. And that's it. So, this is a good change. And we have Arcaspore Cursed. I think this is more of a thematic thing than anything else. I can't think of anything this helps off the top of my head. Other than, um, oh, what's his name? Eltabald. Yeah. The only thing this helps is, like, Eltabald. He's, I think, the only thing with the Cursed Synergy. There might be something else, but I think he's the only one. But I think this is more of a theme thing than anything else. But, yeah. I like these changes. Afan. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Afan's getting changed before we scroll down. Are we or are we not killing the Cultist deck? Because if Afan doesn't play himself out of the deck anymore, we've killed Cultists. At least in the non-interactive way they currently are. As the least skill-based top deck in the game. In my opinion. And I think everyone else's. So let's see. Afan, once all leader charges are used up, summon self. Yeah, kind of what I figured. From your deck to a random allied row. 
This will now no you can't infuse your Afan and then get a just proc your scenario immediately, which I thought was really dumb, and I'm glad they changed it. I think everyone thought it was really dumb. This is also more in line with what its ability used to be before they did the rework too. If you control at least four units with flanking, play self inside and gain zeal. See, this is a good way to do it. Because cultists were just exploiting him to do the deactivate the cults, deactivate the um, internal eclipse scenario to just get that infused effect the turn they played it. The problem with that is there is no way to interact with their game plan other than just killing everything they summoned out of there, everything, that, every cultist they played. Like, there's no way to interact with the scenario. You could play a heat wave, you could like, like 100 heat waves if you wanted. It wouldn't matter because they'd still trigger it. I guess you'd heat wave everything in their field then, but you know, you can't have 100 heat waves. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just really dumb. But now you can only get the play effect if you have four units with flanking. So if you're playing soldiers, this also is better in soldiers. Well, it's not better in soldiers. It's the same in soldiers if you're playing enough flanking cards because you just play it anyway and it gets zeal. Was before you summon it out, and it just got summoned out. This is before it's reworked. You'd summon it, summon it out, and then they reworked it, try and work with soldiers where it played itself, so you trigger their end of turn effects like your crossbow and stuff. It still works like that. It still plays itself if you have enough flanking cards. I guess four units of flanking is a lot, though, but you can't have it be too few or else the cultists will just exploit it again. Anyway, this is a good change. We have dealt with the cultist problem which I was really hoping would not continue on into the Gwentfinity. And we got, oh, we've got a couple more here, actually. Rosa and Edna Var Atra. It shows that only unique aristocrats are counted as spawn copies gamed doomed. Okay. I'll be honest, I didn't know it was only unique aristocrats. I did wonder why, my, uh, why she wasn't doing that much damage. But yeah, this makes sense. I never went and checked. I just thought I put the wrong number of aristocrats in my deck. But yeah, okay, that makes sense. So Unique Aristocrats. Kind of weird I didn't know that. I played like 20 games with that deck. And the spawn copies we get doomed. Yeah, okay. And then we've last one we have Dithwin Arbalist. Has counter six. For the most... Uh, okay, this is really good. For those of you who don't know, if you have a Sigvald and a Dithwin Arbalist, um, so you have a few... Say you have a unit and it has two bleeding. If you apply two more bleeding to it, it goes to four bleeding. It still counts as gaining a status. So if you have the Sigvald out and it has nothing on it, you hit it with, you have an Arbalist, you hit the Sigvald with something, the Sigvald takes damage, its ability kicks in where it takes bleeding instead, it gained a status, so Dyth would Arbalist would hit it, that does the damage, that would be converted to a bleeding tick, which is a status, and Dyth would Arbalist would hit it. It would just be an infinite loop, you just infinitely hit the Sigvald until the game crashed or you got like 20,000 points or whatever happened. I think the game crashed. I don't remember. Usually the game crashes with Sigvald loops. So uh, now it only hits it six times. So that's good. It's also like a general nerf to the Arbalist, which is fine. It's going to do 10. It's going to be a 10 for 4 with the damage, but the Arbalist was extremely good. So this makes sense. Northern Realms. So we have Princess Ada. Her abilities change, deploy devotion. I really tried to get, the oh, before we get into this. I really tried to get Princess added a work last patch. I just couldn't get the curse deck to do anything. So we'll see if they're giving her a buff here, which would be pretty nice. Billy changed. Deploy Devotion. So that's the same. Gain Immunity. That's the same. First time a curse you enters a battlefield during your turn, boost self by its base power. What's the cha- Oh, oh, during your turn. Okay. So this is just a fix because... Okay, I, I see what they're doing here. So the Princess Ada is staying the same. Other than the fact that your opponent, previously, if you played Princess Ada, your opponent could not play curse cards because they were boosting your Ada. So, like, in some matchups, this was just broken, right? Because the opponent's cards were cursed, and they couldn't play them. There's not that many curse cards in the game, but I see what they're doing for here. So they want it to be when you do it during your turn. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I guess the Ada deck will be about the same then. We'll see. Maybe we'll get to work this time. Although I didn't really say nerfs to the top decks, right? There's like, uh, what are the best decks? Like, Akarantia, probably. Enslaved. With the Tactics, probably like... What else is really good? I guess the other Nilfgaard deck's pretty good too. The Ball deck. 
whatever. There's a bunch of good decks right now. And only one of them... No, th th not even one of them here. This was uh, just a rewording. Yeah, it looks like they're all the same. Yeah, okay. So, we'll see if we can get this to work. But basically, this just stops it from being unfair if your opponent's playing cursed cards in their deck that you have in Ada. Makes sense. Radovid Judgment. Oh, this is a card I'm excited to see here. New part of the ability. This is all anyone really wanted on Radovid. It's a new part of the ability because... He was so boring as he was that it just wasn't worth it, especially not 6 power for 10 provisions. Sure, he comes out of your deck when you use all your leaders, that's a different way to get him out, but Roach is a 4 for 10 on a gold card. We really hope, at least I was hoping, Rat of a Judgment would be more interesting. So let's see what the new ability is. Order damage enemy unit by 0, increased by 1 for each time you've used your leader to your ability this game. I like it. I really like it. This is all we really want on Rat of a Judgment, it's like another effect. Make him feel like it was worth it, and he feels like he's worth it now, right? So you're playing... Also, this is a buff to um, the Inspired one, the plus one charge, and then the Scythe Men guy, because that one has the most charges. Although, I'm guessing you'll just use this in the, uh, the Snowdrop, Golden Necker, or Roach with your, what's it called? You know what I'm talking about. The Onager Traveling Precise deck. I don't know what the name of the deck is. I was trying to think of a name for it. But yeah, that deck. Because you use the leader charge like four times during that game. And this comes out of six, has four damage. That's pretty good. I guess Stockpile would love this too. Stockpile might love this even more. Because you get a five damage after you use them all. That's interesting. Because he's a soldier too. So you summon him out. You get a soldier to your melee row that has access to five damage. And then you can play your siege engines. Although if you're stockpiled already... You will have your siege on the board, so I don't think it'll help that much with setup, but this is much more interesting. I really like this. I really do like this. We'll be trying this guy out now, now that he's more interesting. Oh, hold on a second. Selkirk now has Cursed, and Vandergrift has Cursed. That helps Ada quite a bit, actually, because those are good cards you'd want in your deck. If you're playing, maybe you can do, like, Knight Ada now, because there was already Cursed Knight. Huh, maybe you can do Ada with the Knights. I wanted to try that before, and that's one of the things I did try, but there just weren't enough cursed things that had synergies with both, but these do. Let's see if we can do something there. That is cool. Scoyatel. Now, Scoyatel right now has, like, one playable deck. That's good. So, really hoping to get some buffs here. Angus Bricree. Updated the tooltip. Sure. Okay. Mahakam Pass. Create any bronze Scoitel dwarves, not only Mahakam dwarves. Could it create them before? I guess not. I'm trying to think if I got anything else. For some reason, I thought it could make them before, too. Maybe this is a tooltip thing? I'm not too sure. I might be wrong. But I feel like I've made Agitator off of Mahakam Pass before. Maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, now it has this. Pavko Gale has Harmony. Ooh, that's very cool. So Pavko's the two damage guy. Or the one damage if you have a, a neutral card. And he's a human. The thing is for Pavko is he used to be, like, back in the day, used to consider playing Pavko as a human in Harmony. Because you didn't have any other humans you wanted to play. Except sometimes Milva, but then Milva got reworked. Now you have Abandoned Girl, though. So if you want the human tag for your Saskia Commander, you have Abandoned Girl, which means Pavko, you don't need him for human. But if you were going to be able to not play Abandoned Girl, have Pavko instead, that is interesting. And he's like a double engine threat, right? Because at Harmony as an engine, he's got the two damage as an engine. I'm going to try him out in Harmony. I'm not sure if he'll stay, but I think this will be enough that it's good. I think it'll be enough to make him an option, which is good. Kind of missed playing this guy. Well, that's it, though. I was kind of hoping for some more, a um, little bit more, but uh, whatever. We'll see. We'll see whatever the balance council does in the future, so. Not all hope is lost for Squiatel. On to Skellige. Otkel, the deploy ability is now limited to the range row. Okay. It makes sense. I like it when they give you the option to not use the ability if you don't want to. Because what this does, that's very cool, is 
You know how Ockel boosts his base power by one for all the alchemies in your deck? If you don't want to play your Freya's Blessings with him, you can now play him. Actually, will he damage himself now? That is a good question. That is a good question. So, what Ockel reads, if I'm correct here... So you just deploy, if I remember, you damage him down to one, then play all copies of the Blessing from the Graveyard and give them Doomed. So yeah, that's, all, that's all his deployability, yeah, so he won't damage himself. Yeah, so he won't damage himself now, if you play him ranged. Or melee, I mean. He'll only damage himself if you play him ranged. What that means is you can, if you don't want to bring back your Freya's Blessings, or you just want to point slam him for like 11 or 12 points, maybe like 10 or 11, depending on how many alchemies you have. You can just play a melee now for like 10 or 11 points and then not bring back the blessings. Maybe they got banished. Maybe you got all your good cards back already. Huh. That is pretty good. I like that change. I like when they do this. Give you the option of using the abilities or not, depending on the rows. It's a really good way to use the rows and mechanics, I think. Hey, now it damages himself by instances of one. So yeah, okay. So if you played him before, he'd do like, you'd be like a 10, do minus nine to himself. Now he's going to do like minus one, minus one, minus one. I guess that matters for some interactions. Like the, um... Ooh, what's the guard guy? The one who's got, like, a spear in front of him, or axe in front of him, who's got, like, an orange tunic on. I can't remember his name. But the one when an exchange student takes damage, he gets boosted by one. I guess that would trigger him each time now. That could be cool. That could be interesting. But yeah, I like this change. Then Svalblood. Ooh, Svalblood. Oh, no. My boy Svalblood. Damage required to spawn the Fnatic changed from 6 to 8. Ooh, we're nerfing the Svalblood. To be fair, the mid rangey Svalblood, a self wound deck, or not self wound deck, the mid rangey one with um, Hatch Settle Fury and, you know, uh, Old Gear to Mortal, Sigvald, Nut the Callus, or Knut the Callus, rather. All just, it was really, it was another one of the top decks. So that actually got hit here. The Svalblood change is pretty good, or pretty big, I mean. Like eight damage is a lot harder than six. Even on his deploy, that's gonna be harder to trigger. But I guess at this point he kinda deserves it. When he came out, people didn't when he came out, people I talked to at least didn't think he's very good. Or that self wound was very good, but at this point, self wounds turn into like an extremely strong mid rangey type deck. So I guess it makes sense we're nerfing the Fall Blood here, because you just bring him back, right? You can always use Fry's Blessing on him to get him back, and then you just do it again. So Yeah, this makes sense. Ixera, yeah, this card, Syndicate, we have two changes here. And two changes, which I think I said would happen, probably, during some of my comments or in the Akarantia video in the past. But yeah, Ixera's advice from 6 to 8. Ixera, as I said, the fact that she played 8 for 8 with an upside of destroying the opponent's Lotus unit was ridiculous. And yeah, so I thought either they'd lower her base power or lower or increase the vice. And they went increasing the vice. That makes sense. Vice 8 is a lot harder than Vice 6. Especially with Conjurer's Candle. Like, the most common thing, at least I saw in my games with Ixera, is you'd play your Conjurer's Candle. You'd have 6 coins. You'd play Ixera and use your Conjurer's Candle 3 times. It's 1, 2, 3. That's 6 coins. You boost your Ixera, boost something else, and then their lowest unit dies. That was one way to do it. And this is just nerfed to the card. The card was too good. I think we all agree. And Novigrad, this card... When Novigrad came out, and in every video I've used it, I've talked about how strong Novigrad is, especially compared to Count Reuben's Treasure. And it got hit by two provisions from 10 to 12. Warranted, because the card's so good. But, ouch. <laughs> yeah, Novigrad was amazing. I, the fact that it was 10 on release was kind of ridiculous. Not even Battle Stations, though, got a two provision nerf when it got hit after release. I guess it got hit before release, from 10 to 11. But not even Battle Stations took a two provision hit. Actually, not even Renfrey took a two provision hit, although she got other changes. But yeah, so Novigrad was incredible, and this is completely warranted as a change. All right, anything else in here before we finish up? Tool tips. Oh, the shield effect got fixed. That was annoying. Like the little shield golden triangle or triangle. Where triangle come from? Golden rectangle stay on the board. That's good. Short is no longer a common beast, but now an epic relict. Con, can we just get short to like a 15 or 20, please? I really want it to be. But yeah, okay, that's better. 
Although now you can't necromancy it. That's like half the fun. You like makes it short. You necromancy it back for ten. But there's way better cards than necromancy at this point. I'm talking about like way back when Homecoming was just out. You could do stuff like that. Henry of our Atra spawn cards are now shown on the previous screen. Really good. Really annoying. They have to either like memorize them all. Especially if you're playing Rune Mage, it's harder to memorize them all. But like now the opponent can see what you put in your two your deck too, I guess. And then casting contest no longer disables grace. Not a very common interaction, but you know. Death when Arbliss only triggers one damage at a time when multiple statuses are applied simultaneously. I guess this is for the purposes of his counter to help it track better. Princess Ada and Fallblood no longer react to units move between rows on the same side of the battlefield. Okay, so these aren't things you do very much, although I guess you could ladder in Northern Realms. But yeah, that... Moving units sometimes had some weird bugs. They would remember the uh, Tibor bug where you moved him, the opponent drew a card. That was hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, this is a good change. And then Salamandra Mage no longer counts Adrenaline inconsistently reacting to tributes. Yeah, if you tr if you played your Salamandra Mage like, without her highlighted in your hand, sometimes she would do this. This was weird, but that's the patch, guys. Overall, I like it. Can't wait to see what we do with the Gwentfinity, but for now, that'll be it, and we'll see you in the next one. That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more, and you can check out some more videos over here. And thanks for watching.